हेलो एंड गुड मॉर्निंग बैक अगेन दिस मॉर्निंग सैटरडे मे बी यू हैव वॉच द थ्री वीडियोज अबाउट आवर प्रिंटिंग वर्कशॉप एट बैन आट बाउ ये बट लेट मी टेल यू लिटल अबाउट द प्रोजेक्ट दैट वी वै फाइनली एबल टू ओपन एट डिसम्बर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी आफ्टर हैविंग थॉक अबाउट इट फॉर एट लीस्ट टेन इयर्स इट वॉज द फिनिश लाइन ऑफ अ लॉन्ग प्लानिंग एंड बिल्डिंग फेज The printing workshop is a cooperation between the two municipal museums Klingspor Museum and City of uh, House of City History and the International Sandefelder Foundation. The Dr. Marshall Foundation made it possible to give our now workshop supervisor Dominic Guzman a con- contract for one year of building phase. You might be able to imagine that there were a lot of people with a lot of know-how in the background needed to get this beautiful workshop up and running. I want to use this forum to send a big thank you to all of them. And I'm looking forward to all of you coming here in the future to talk about printing and to print here. I absolutely want to use this opportunity to invite you all. We are looking forward to wonderful workshop programs and artist projects, talks and conferences about the absolutely stunning world of printing and bookmaking. Today, I proudly present the artist Philip Hennefogel from Berlin, printing life for us. He has been working with the technique of linocut for over 36 years now. And I don't say too much when I tell you he is a master at what he does. So come on. and let's take a peek hello i will show you uh, how i normally print my my lino cuts um i chose uh, a very old or quite old uh, lino cut which um <clears throat> which contains um, which has all the tricks uh, which makes this te- technique uh, interesting so you got uh, black lines uh, white white lines um as uh, big surface uh, transparent um parts and and the, and the pattern in in the background i'm i will put some color on this uh printing machine which is from the 1950s and was produced for um relief print and typography so the the print is um put in position and um the special thing on this uh printing press is, is that the um uh, the printing plate is fixed and and screwed in uh in in the printing bags bed so they are um it's it's uh, it doesn't move in in um while printing and the cylinder has this fantastic gripper system where you um the, the sheet while printing can't move too so now i'm trying to color the print not to look the pressure is off the first print there that's the first test print the color is not uh, not dark enough i have to put a little bit more color uh, i'm sorry philip Yeah. Uh, I think the machine is pretty loud yeah. and our um, audio is a bit is mumbled so maybe you could I don't know could you stop the machine explain what you're doing yeah. and then do it first I, I I let to 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 um the color in the in the color um, rollers is getting a little bit uh, better and then I put it off and I can print without 
without motor. So I think I do it like that. And uh, so I'm, I'm trying to color it in the end. Try to do a better print. The first prints are never very good, so that's a completely normal thing. Now, the whole situation later, but it's still it's it's not perfect. So I have to try a little bit more in order to to get <clears throat> more color in these parts and. I have to color it a little bit more. I have to switch on the motor for a moment. Okay. Next try. Perfect, I need more color. The next, um, the next try, I switch off again the machine so that you can hear the sounds of the press. And finally, the good quality is coming. So there are still some stains and, and maybe it's dirt on the, on, on the printing plate, I don't know. I will try a little bit harder in order to get finally a, a perfect print. So. And maybe I need a little bit more. I brought with me some paper. in order to uh, increase the pressure and that under the sheet. result getting better with a little bit more pressure and if I would print an, a complete edition I, ha I would have to throw away maybe uh, the first 10 or 20 prints until color and, uh, and machine I are, are running proper, properly. So this is, this is all, always the problem that the first prints are never perfect. Ich muss die Switch on the machine for a moment again.
much better it won't uh, won't get. So <laughs> um, <coughs> this machine wants always to go in the wrong direction. So, so that's the finished print, more or less. And uh, if it's, um, um, I, I printed uh, some years ago a, a big edition of this print, and uh, we got here a framed and uh, a perfect uh, framed work of this of this old edition. So. So at least I can say that they, the advantage of these uh, printing machines is that you are able uh, to print really high editions. So, so a couple of hundred prints uh, are easily possible to print with these um, machines and uh, you will be much uh, faster than printing by hand or with, with um, these other presses uh, here in the in the workshop, which are uh, you only can print one by one, always um, having more uh, uh, things to do in order to get a, a good print. And here is this really um, very really a fast process. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Philip, for that great presentation. Okay. We got uh, some questions, a few questions already um, about the process of the mm -hmm. machine. So now you've printed with black, yes. but you can use different colors as well. Maybe of you course. can talk about the process of the walls and how it works to change the color and maybe the effort <coughs> that it actually is to change it. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, you you are only uh, able to print one by one color. So so it's. Uh, if I print uh, color prints, normally I start with the brighter colors, maybe, for example, yellow. And, um, and then uh, I have to print all the, the complete edition in, in, in yellow and then um, clean the machine and maybe change the plate. So maybe I prepared a, a, a print with a couple of uh, different uh, plates and then um, I, I print the darker color, for example, and um, so um, the only possibility to print two or three colors at the same time is uh, to do a so-called iris or iris uh, print, which uh, is the trick that you put on the on one side of the of the color rollers, for example, yellow. In the middle, red, and in the other part, maybe uh, blue. And um, I switch on for a moment the, the the rolling inking system, and you see that the the, the above roller is moving. And um, this um, I don't know the English word for this uh, for this uh, rollers. Um, this uh, makes that the the color is mixing on on this on this roller system and you got uh, between the colors you put maybe yellow and red in the middle is orange and um, red and um, and blue for example in the middle would be um, a mixture violet or uh, yeah and um, yeah that's that's the, the way how I would print with colors, for example. And people are not only curious about the printing process, but about the different gray tones that you got by only mm -hmm. using one plate. Maybe you can talk about the process of yeah. the cutting and how you're working on getting a picture out of this deep, tense, intense tones by only one plate. Yeah, the, the interesting thing is um, I'm printing 
I'm calling these um, these uh, or these prints I do normally uh, or in in the last years are um, so-called reduction cuts. So I got um, at first I, I I do the drawing of 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 the picture and. Um, and then I cut only the, the parts out of the plate, which has to be um, has to be re remain paper um, paper white. And and then I'm printing with with such a machine a very very light black cover. So I it is it is possible to to put on these machines only a very small amount of color. So that you uh, you got a, a printing effect that you are similar to uh, aquarelle painting, you are working with the with the white of the paper, and then I print. I have to print uh, for an edition, for example, uh, example of, of ten sheets. I have to uh, print maybe twenty five um, um, uh, prints, and then I, I I go on cutting in the same plate, and I cut out. Everything with, which has to uh, remain in the first printed color, and I print a little bit darker over this first layer. And um, with with these these machines, I got the guarantee that the uh, the print, the second print, and the third and the fourth are fitting exactly over the, the last um, over the first uh, layers. And 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 this this is a big advantage because uh, normally you, if you are printing by hand you are very often problems um, to fit the print exactly on 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 the former um, um, former print. Sorry. Mm -hmm. So actually, there are two like magical points about the machine. One yeah. that you can really fit the print in the form where he yeah. or it was sitting before and the other magical effect is that you can really kind of um, decide how much color is on the walls yes. and roll and by that you can actually decide which tone is brighter and which is darker. Yes. Yeah. And um, yeah. And, uh, and, and another advantage of this color inking system is that I got no stripes in, 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 in rolling over the um, the printing plate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so actually, we got some nice comments about our English terms, <laughs> which we are missing. So I'll yeah. just fill these words in. Yes. Uh, so the role, actually, my colleague Dorothy Ada, with all which who all of you got to know in the last few days, the role is called rainbow roll. So I was close, ah. and like the small ones, I'll just come over here. You were showing on some small rolls. That's the smaller one. Yeah. Is that right? That you were showing at? So if I'm fitting the words with the, the item right, it's called the oscillator. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, oh, yeah. That's, 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 that makes sense. <laughs> okay. Um, in, in German, it's Verreiberwalze. Yeah. And Thomas Gravemaker, mm -hmm. he says, that effect or effect that we were talking about just is called a gradient when you go from one color to another. So maybe we'll right. learn some stuff yeah. as well, so at least Thomas in the, English, <laughs> in yeah. the English terms. And this, yeah. this way of printing is sometimes also called split fountain printing, where you mix the colors while they are on the roll while printing. Yeah. And it was, I think, by the, by the Colby um, poster company, this is something um, which was um, used quite a lot uh, back in the day. Yeah, so if there aren't any questions on top, or you guys can take the chance to ask another one over the chat, I'll just wait a second. Actually, I'd like to blend in for a second because mm -hmm. I was I was giving Philip the, the, the tools that he's using because yeah. normally when we listen to something about line cut, we think about the things yeah. we learned at school, baby. But so. it's much more, um, it's much nicer um, tools that he's yeah. working with. And um. actually, I'd <clears throat> like you to say something to the way you cut these things. Maybe you can show us a little bit by 
Well, I got a proof uh, plate here, and uh, so the most important thing is to have uh, good tools. Really. And I made myself uh, by myself a kind of uh, cutting plate in order to to be able to not to hold the the plate and to hurt myself, and I'm using this this uh, uh, knives which you are you are maybe have have been seeing in in internet or on Instagram, which are a lot of 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 uh, printmaker are using them, and so with these knives I'm I'm able to to cut really really uh, fine lines, and. Or with this knife, I'm, I'm cutting edges, for example. So I try always in my prints not to cut the whole print with only one knife, because um, then you get a very boring looking um, dino cut. So I try to, to, to use these knives um, <clears throat> for example, here, if I need a, a kind of stone stone surface, I can use this these knives like that and and destroy the the surface and try to to do something which is not regular and 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 looks after cutting a wall. It looks really nice like a stone surface. Uh, dieser kleine Stift. Ein oh. So, if, if I color it, you see that it's getting a kind of uh, cracked structure. And of course, the bigger knives are for cutting bigger parts of, of the plate. To move it, and so yeah, this lino is quite old, and uh, meanwhile it is uh, it's a little bit hard. So I have to really need a lot of of, of energy to to cut. But uh, if if you got a lino which is a little bit hard. I got some. Uh, I got a lamp or uh, warming bottle in order to to warm it up, and then it gets more smooth. Or you can cut even in the sunlight, and the material gets a little bit softer, and it's easier to cut. But it's interesting that uh, for for um, parts inside, um, in between, um, no, for the more delicate and detailed parts. It's it's very good if the lino is 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 quite hard, because um, it's better for these um, very small details uh, to cut. So it's it's uh, you damage more if the uh, lino is too too soft. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you for mm -hmm. that. We got one more question about the paper that you're printing on. Susanne mm -hmm. Klein asks. Are you using a different paper for the 10 first prints you're doing? Yes. Because for her paper that she uses, she pays like 8 euro a sheet, which is kind of something. So yes. she asks how you are doing it. Yes, of course. I do. Um, normally, I, I even if I print by hand, I got some uh, test papers, which are cheaper. But I try to, um, to look for testing paper, which has, has more or less the same paper color. And it needs to be uh, to have the same thickness, because um, only if I got more or less the sa same thickness, I can, um, yeah, I can calculate how much color I need and um, how the the print is behaving while pre uh, getting printed. And um, and the paper question is is the most uh, delicate question while printing because. Good paper uh, costs money. It's really expensive, 
and I try to to avoid to to waste good paper while uh, testing or um, even sometimes I use the backside of of a, of a, of, a, of a misprinted um, version uh, in order to n not to throw away something which I can maybe use for a test print and um, but anyway it's um, it's very important to use good paper for for beautiful prints. Mm -hmm. There's one more question of Kathy Lovery, who thanks you very much for the presentation, how you're doing the lino cut. I'm not sure if there's a misunderstanding because she's asking for the material that you're working on. Yeah. And a question is, do you vary the kind of wood? But since you're working with... Many this, is, uh, this is lino, yeah. this is really f uh, original floor material. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think in, in Europe it is quite uh, common. But I think in, in other parts of, of, of the world, it's, it's also known. Mm -hmm. And um, I know some people who are also cutting in PVC mm -hmm. or um, some arti other artificial materials. But um, I think uh, lino in generally is, is more suitable. It's, 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 it's um, yeah, it's Together with the, with the right tools, um, it's, it comes very close to woodcut mm -hmm. and it has one advantage, it has no own character. Mm -hmm. So wood has always a structure how the tree was grown and um, the lino is completely neutral. Yeah. So it's, it's mm -hmm. I think that's what her question is about because the yeah. question is, if you are choosing your motive, like are you cutting and image of a landscape or of yeah. architecture, do you choose different materials or did you just answer it by since the lino doesn't have any special... No. So I, if I need structures, mm -hmm. I have to cut them. Mm -hmm. So, okay. And one thing is true that in my other prints there seems to be a kind of structure which is the paper itself. Mm -hmm. So, so um, with this um, manner of printing I, I got used to in the, in the last uh, 10 years, um, I noticed that sometimes I print with, with less pressure or more pressure in order to, to um, yeah, give some parts of the prints more weight and other parts um, uh, get, get, get printed softer, so with less pressure. And so the color doesn't sit really inside the paper, so it's really only surface. Mm -hmm. And um, and then happens something interesting because even this this paper I use is really produced in a high uh, it's a high number of, of paper. So it's so it's not a real machine paper, but it's in in between. And every sheet of paper has a, a different surface. So. So at the end, they are coming out um, maybe edition of 12 prints. And I, I would say it's an edition of 12 uh, unicata, unique, unique prints. prints. Mm -hmm. So there are always small um, differences in, in the gray or in, in the blacks. Um, because when I'm printing the last um, um, colors of, of these uh, several color prints, then I'm I'm really choosing how much how much color I need um, for every single print. Uh, I have to decide. Okay, here I need more, or I need to go through the press twice. Mm -hmm. And um, and the problem, of course, before I, I I said that I have to print 25 sheets for an edition of 10, because sometimes happen I there are happening mistakes. Mm -hmm. So maybe there's not fitting exactly or something was moving, dirt on the plate. So lots of uh, things can happen. And uh, sometimes I had it uh, in, in the past. I had some additions, uh, which is, yeah, 10, 10 uh, um, addition of 10, but nothing more. No artist uh, proofs, nothing more. Mm -hmm. So it's sometimes um, it's frustrating because it's not working like you think, and that. Uh, but 
But one thing I love of, of printing is that uh, if the cut is finished, you can start to print and uh, very often it doesn't print like you want. Mm -hmm. So you have to um, solve problems in a hurry. Mm -hmm. And that sometimes this kind of risky thing, um, this push it, pushes me sometimes to, to new sol solutions and, and I, I love the creativity creativity which uh, which which uh, appears while working so sometimes I, I i know before i i would like to go like that and then it, this method doesn't work so i have to find another solution and um yeah that's the i think the fun of 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 printing mm -hmm. of course the cut or finding the motif is another very nice part of of this work mm -hmm. I'm having the impression that you already answered the question of Stefan Soltek, who was asking how much control can you put on the printing process by the machine and how much is the surprise while you are printing that you will see yeah. afterwards. And yeah, then the next step, is it inspirational or is it more like a hurry to get behind the surprise to, to run after it and find a solution? Is it an inspirational, artistical process as well for you? I think it's, uh, if I understand the question in the right way, mm -hmm. I think everything is connected with everything. Mm -hmm. So um, sometimes, of course, you are in a hurry and uh, something is not working. But um, <clears throat> I think... Um, or I, I say it like that, I learned to, to include the process of printing when I got the idea for a work, then I think uh, how, it, how I want to print it. And, um, and I think uh, this is a very, very difficult part of, of printing in general that you have to um, follow a certain process or a certain way of, of doing something. But there are lots of, um, can happen lo lots of things. And, uh, and uh, when you're doing that more, um, more often or over years, you learn to integrate the, the technical problems um, in 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 the real real realization of your of your print or your your artist idea, and um, and this is I think the the this this balance or these two things which at first have n not not uh, not many things to do, but um, but they are very interesting if they, this is working together. More or less. Thank you, Philip, very much. There aren't any more okay. questions or comments.